Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Casual Crochet Bucket Hat, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description, or go to your favorite search engine and simply type in Moogly Casual Bucket Hat, and it should pop right up. To make this pattern, I used a USK 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. This one is by Susan Bates, and I also used about 200 yards of Bernat Maker. Now, for this particular hat you see before you, I used some leftovers that I had from the casual bag set. You can see the blue, the yellow, and the white right here. Saffron, sky blue, and cream, that is. However, if you prefer, or maybe you haven't made the bags yet, you can also make this hat as a one skein pattern. So it's very versatile and just a lot of fun. You'll also need your standard crochet supplies, of course, scissors, stitch markers, and a yarn needle. This pattern includes two sizes. The smallest is for teen or small adult heads, less than 22 inches in circumference or so. And the larger side is for, size rather is for larger adult heads over 22 inches. With a bucket hat, I personally prefer a looser fit, so keep that in mind and you can adjust the fit for yourself as you go. Let's go ahead and get started making our own casual crochet bucket hat. First, let's take a quick look at the written instructions. As I mentioned, this hat pattern includes two sizes, so you'll need to pay attention to the instructions. You see here, we start at the top of the hat, we work our way top down. These instructions are for both sizes, but when you come down here, round eight is for the larger size only. If you're making the smaller size, you stop at round seven and then jump on down here to the sides of the hat. If you're making the larger size, you'll go ahead and make round eight and then move on to the sides of the hat. Again, you can see how that's labeled for both sizes. If I turn the page here to our last page, you'll see for the brim, we do have a difference depending on size. So if you're making that smaller size hat, you'll follow these set of instructions for the brim. And for the larger size, you'll follow this set of, set of instructions. There's just a few differences in the numbers for the different sizes. But other than that, those are the only differences. Now, as I mentioned, we start at the top of the hat and work our way down to the brim. So for the top of the hat, I happen to use my leftover saffron color. And of course, you can use whichever color you like. You can see here, this is just a flat circle worked in half double crochets, not herringbone half double crochets as are featured here, but standard half double crochets. You can see the difference not only in the texture, but in the weave. This creates a more open weave on the top of the hat, allowing the head to breathe more. Keeping in mind this hat, it is, is designed more for warmer days rather than the winter months. So we're going to start right up here. Let me put this aside and we'll grab some of our leftover yellow yarn. You can see this particular colored in the casual um, ID pouch or the casual crochet pouch that I made earlier. So to begin at the top of our hat, again, both sizes, we begin with a magic circle. So I'm going to take the end of my yarn and go over the forefinger of my non-hook hand twice towards me, just like that. A lot of words for a simple gesture. Let's do it again. I take the end of my yarn and just go over my finger like that twice. Then going to hold on to both of those ends here to stabilize the yarn. Insert my hook under both of those loops right on my finger. I'll use the end of my hook to grab this loop that's further back and just pull it right to the front of that other loop. You can see how they're crossed right there on my finger. Then I'm going to use my fingers to help me grab that yarn, yarn over and pull it through. Now my magic loop is somewhat secured together. To continue, I'm going to do the chain one as written in the instructions and now we're ready to begin our stitching into the magic circle. For this pattern, we start by working 10 half double crochets right into the ring. So that means we yarn over, and we're going to go right into that ring. I'm gonna leave it on my finger for this first stitch, and I'm going to go under both of those loops. So there was my active loop, my yarn over, and now I've gone over that tail end and the loop that goes all the way around my finger there. I'll yarn over again, pull my loop up and through that ring, and yarn over and pull through all three loops here, there we go, to finish my half double crochet. Now with my ring secured, I can go ahead and pull my finger out. I also like to always mark my first and last stitch when I'm working in the round. So I'm gonna pull in my stitch markers here and I'll put a stitch marker right in that first stitch. If you have not yet acquired stitch markers on your crochet journey, you can use a scrap of yarn 
or a safety pin or a paper clip. Those are all really good options as well. So that is our first half double crochet into the ring. I need to add nine more for a total of 10. So I'll yarn over, go right into that ring. And every time I go in, I want to go into that ring and make sure I capture that tail as well. That will allow us when we get all these stitches made to pull on that tail and close up that magic circle. So there's two stitches. We're just going to continue to put half double crochets right into that ring. Again, I go right into the center there and just make sure that tail stays right with it inside each one of those stitches. So if you haven't half double crocheted before here, I'll finish this one and then we'll do one here together slowly. For half double crochet, we yarn over, insert our hook, in this case in the ring. Oops, let's do that again. Yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, pull a loop up and through with three loops on our hook. We yarn over and pull through all three. That is a half double crochet. I would say of all the most basic stitches, it tends to be the last one people learn, but it tends to be a real favorite as well. It's a little bit bigger than a single crochet, but not quite as uh, of a loose and drapey fabric as a double crochet. So I think it becomes really popular for some really great reasons. So now that I've been yammering, I haven't been counting. Let's see how many stitches we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I made two too many. So we'll just go ahead and pull those right out. So now I have my ten half double crochets made right into that ring. So now I can take that tail end and gently pull on it. I like to stabilize it with my fingers, which isn't great for showing it. But you can see every time I pull a little harder there, that ring closes up a little bit more and more. And when I go to weave in my ends, I will put this on my yarn needle and I'll weave it back and forth in different directions. And that will really help keep that magic ring closed. It's important not to sew your ends in in just one direction because then it can loosen up. You want to make sure to reverse directions. So with that, we can come back here, get our loop back on our hook and finally finish round one with a slip stitch in our first stitch. Now, one more thing. I said we were ready, but one more thing before I do that, I do want to put a second stitch marker right in the top of that last stitch. This way, as I come around for each round, I will know which one is the first and last stitch of each round, and I won't confuse the slip stitch here for one of the stitches that I want to work into. There we go. So we've got our first round at the top of our hat. Now, the next several rounds, until we get to the sides of the hat, we're just continuing to increase in a standard flat circle pattern. So that means we're going to, for round two, double whatever number of stitches we had in round one. We had 10 stitches in round one. We'll want 20 stitches in round two. So that means we're going to chain one and put two half double crochets in each stitch around. So we just yarn over, go right to that first marked stitch. You can move that stitch marker out of the way at this point if you'd like. Put our first half double crochet in there. Now, as soon as that's made, I'll go ahead and put that stitch marker in our new first stitch of the round. Might seem silly here at the beginning, but the bigger the rounds get, the easier it is to get confused. So we've got one stitch in that stitch. We go right back in that same exact stitch and put a second half double crochet in there. And then we just do that in each stitch around. Go into each one twice for a half double crochet. So that should give you a total of 20 half double crochets when you get to the end of round two. So I'll see you when we get to the end of round two. All right, so here we are at the end of round two. I've made 20 stitches total, two half double crochets in each stitch of the round before. And then I moved up the stitch marker there to the last stitch of the round. And right in between, you can see there is my slip stitch to close up the round. So now we're ready for round three. Now, as I've said it, stated, these are all just half double crochet rounds worked in your standard flat circle pattern. So you can follow along with written pattern to see exactly the number of stitches you need to make for each size. We're going to go ahead and work through round three here together, but other than that, they're just rounds of half double crochet. Now this top of the hat and how many rounds of these you add does determine the overall size of the hat in terms of how big around the head it goes. So if you've got an extra large head or an even an extra small head, you may want to change the number of rounds here anyway. So for now, let's go ahead and make round three together. We're gonna start with a chain one, and work two half double crochets in the first stitch. So I put the first one in there and put a stitch marker right in the top. 
and then a second half double crochet in that same stitch just like we did before and then I'm just going to put one half double crochet in the stitch after that and that's our repeat for this round two then one two then one two then one all around so in the next stitch I'll put two half double crochets one two a little more yarn there there we go and then I will put one half double crochet in the next stitch two half double crochets in the stitch after that one and two one half double crochet in the stitch after that so we just continue that same pattern all the way around so that at the end of round three we'll have a total of 30 stitches we will have once again once again increased by 10 stitches so I'll see you when I get to the end of round three all right so here I finished round three which has 30 stitches two then one two the one is the pattern all the way around so we've got one stitch in that last stitch right there marked with our stitch marker and we're all set for round four so let's return to the written instructions for a minute so you don't have to watch me just half double crochet here for another half an hour round four is our next round so we would chain one to begin just like we did before and then we continue that flat circle pattern so that would be half double crochet in the next two stitches then two in the one after that so we'd be half double crochet in two stitches one one and then two in the one after that one one two one one two one one two all the way around again that's going to have us increase by 10 more stitches for a total of 40. round five the pattern changes a little bit because we need to keep moving that increase around the increase is the stitch where we work two stitches into one stitch and we need to move that around to avoid creating a line of increasing in our hat sometimes we can do that line of increasing in pattern to create a pattern but here we want to move it around so that our circle looks a little more even and flat altogether. so for round five we do our chain one to begin just as we've been doing then our repeat beginning here with the asterisk is half double crochet in the next stitch so that's our one two half double crochet in the next stitch so two in the next then half double crochet in the next two stitches so it's one two one 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 two one one all the way around for a total of 50. this just continues round six then is two one 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 two half double crochets in the next stitch half double crochets in this next four stitches so one two one 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 all the way around for 60. <laughs> round seven we're going to have five stitches in between those increases half double crochet in the next three stitches increase half double crochet in the next two then remember to start back here half double crochet in the next three then two then half double crochet in the next two stitches just follow along with the written instructions and that will get you to 70 stitches in round seven so i just i'm going over all this because i really want you to learn how flat circles work in crochet because once you grasp how this part works then you can really make so many more things on your own and you can adjust things to fit you personally so I know this is a lot of extra information if you're just beginning if you're just beginning you can just follow along with exactly what it says right here um, but if you're someone who's ready to start adjusting things and making maybe your own hats or your own designs we're always adding one more stitch in between the increases and we are increasing by the same number of stitches we started with in round one those are sort of the keys to making your flat circle so you can see for the smaller size we stop at 70 half double crochets for the larger size we do one more round and that takes us up to 80 half double crochet so that is how the top of the hat works and you can as i say just follow the instructions as written or if you want to adjust the size you can adjust the size of the flat circle right here by working those standardized increases so you continue in those flat circles until you've made the top of the hat through round seven for the small size through round eight for the large size then we move on to the sides of the hat which I'm going to be doing now for the sake of time what we want to do now is get color B ready because we're going to be switching to this one for our first round of the sides of the hat so if you're working all in one color you don't have to do this part you can just keep going but if you are switching colors I'm going to go back and actually pull this slip stitch right out here I'm going to undo the slip stitch that closed up the last round of the top of the hat here and I'm actually going to use my color B now I'm only using three colors here so I'm actually going to carry them along the inside of the hat so I don't have to break the yarn if you're using a whole bunch of colors if this is a big stash buster you might want to go ahead 
and, uh, you know, break the yarn and just add it anew for each round. But I'm going to try and carry it inside so I don't have to weave in too many more ends. So you can see here, I've just done the slip stitch with our new color. And now I am going to just let our yellow here, our color A, just hang out while I work the first round, round one of the sides of the hat with color B. So now that I've got it attached and on my hook, I'm going to go ahead and chain one. I just want to do that carefully so I don't pull out that end. And then we're going to work this entire round in the back loop only. So to do that, we need to take a close look at our stitches here. You can see the top of each crochet stitch has two strands here. They sort of make a V. If I turn them this way, I would say they look like nested Vs. But when we're working into our crochet stitches, there's one that's closest to us and one that's furthest away. The one that's closest to us is the front loop, and the one that's furthest away is the back loop. It's always relative to us, the crocheter. It's how we're looking at the project. So to work this round in the back loop only, we're going to be doing herringbone half double crochets, and we're going to put on our hook so it goes under just that back loop, not under both of those loops. Even if you haven't done it before on purpose, you've probably done it before on accident. So I'm going to go ahead and move this stitch marker here out of our way. We've already got our chain one, so we're going to begin making our herringbone half double crochets. They're a lot like standard half double crochets with just a little difference here. We'll do it together. We're going to yarn over. We're going to see that first stitch, the one we attach to there, the one we slip stitch to. We're going to put our hook right between those two loops so that we go under just the back loop. So that's the back loop portion sorted. Then we yarn over, pull our loop up and through. Now that loop that we just pulled up and through, we're going to go ahead and pull under that yarn over loop. And then we yarn over and pull through two to finish the stitch. I know that was a lot of things all at once. So I'm going to go ahead and move my stitch marker right up into that stitch because it's our new first stitch. And then we're going to do that again together here. Now this round, we are working even. Just one herringbone half double crochet in each stitch around, back loop only. So at least you don't have to think about any increases. So we go right to the next stitch. We yarn over, insert our hook under just that back loop only. You can see how I put it right between those loops. So it goes under just that one loop. Yarn over and pull it up. Pull that same loop under that middle loop, that yarn over loop, then yarn over and pull through two. So let's do that again here even slower. This is my active loop. I'm going to yarn over. That's my yarn over loop. I'm going to insert my hook under that back loop only of the stitch, yarn over, pull that loop up through the stitch. Now that loop I just pulled up and through, I'm also going to pull through the yarn over loop. And now I can just yarn over and pull through two. We're going to continue to make those herringbone half double crochets in the back loop only, one per stitch all the way around. So I'll see you when we get to the end of round one of the sides of our hat. Alrighty, so as you can see here, I've worked almost all the way around. All that's left of my, is my slip stitch. I just wanted to point it out by not working under that front loop, that creates this really great line or ridge right here, which we can see again in the top of the finished hat. Just creates a really nice separation between the top and the sides of the hat. You can also see how it started starting to sort of cup up into a bowl or in this case a hat shape we're working from the outside of the hat from the top down so of course that's the way the hat will end up going you can weave in your ends um, when you're all done for now i would just leave these hanging out here we're going to be coming back to use that yellow one again when we get back to that stripe once again if you are working all in one solid color you don't have to worry about any of the changing color things i'm doing here however since i am changing colors i'm going to switch over to my color c in this case, this was the white or cream color, I believe it's called, of the Bernat Maker. So to do that, what I would do is insert my hook there to make my slip stitch, just as I did before. Yarn over, find the end, there we are, of color C. And pull that through for the slip stitch. And then, of course, I can continue to just crochet with this one. Then, when it's time to go all the way around and pull the yellow back up, it would be the next in our series of three colors. It's hanging out in here, and I would just gently pull that up. Now, there's different ways you can do that. Some people like to sort of say when they're making this first stitch of the round, uh, and the rest, these stitches, by the way, are not worked in the back loop only. Only that first round of the size of the hat was back loop only. We're going to be going under both of these top loops. When I insert my hook in that first stitch, if I'd like, I could grab, say, that yellow color and throw it over my hook. 
and sort of put that behind my first stitch. I don't want it to peek through color-wise, but it can be sort of anchored down there on the inside of the hat. I want to make sure to pull it so it doesn't peek through from the outside. Otherwise, you can just let it hang out there on the inside and pull it up when you're needed. You just want to make sure not to pull too tight so that your hat doesn't squinch down. You don't want to leave it too loose that you've got a bunch of flappy loops on the inside of your hat. Um, like I say, if you're not changing colors, or you're changing colors a lot, or you don't like carrying your yarn, you can absolutely just cut your yarn every time and weave in your ends. So with all the color management sorted, let's get back to the pattern itself. Round two, and indeed rounds three through two through nine, I should say, of the hat are all the same. Along the sides here, we're just working even rounds, pairing bone half double crochet, cycling through all three colors. So here we are on color C, so we just go into each stitch with a herringbone half double crochet. Now, as I said, we're no longer working in that back loop only, so now we're going under both of those loops, and we're just going to put a herringbone half double crochet again in each stitch around. Move the stitch marker up there, so we can see what that looks like here in our finished hat. Remember, this is the direction we're working, top down, so here's our flat circle. There's our row of back loop only, and here are our rows. You can see, if you look real close there, you can see a little bit of a seam for this hat. I tried a few different techniques. I never did find one that I love to get rid of that seam look altogether with this stitch. But this is what our rows of herringbone half double crochet look like worked even. And you can see here, I tried a few different techniques, trying to settle on just the perfect one for carrying the yarn inside. I tried a few different ones, didn't fall in love with any of them. Over the years, I've tried different ones, and I think different ones just work well for different projects for this one. I think just drawing it up along the inside was probably, at the end of the day, the best way to go. So we just continue working those rounds of herringbone half double crochet around and around and around until we get down to where we're ready to add our brim. So as you can see, there are a total of nine rounds for the side of the hat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That means you want your last round to be in your color A colorway, assuming you're following the same color pattern here and finish that round with a slip stitch with your color B, which we can use for the brim. Again, if you'd prefer a different color, switch to a different color, it's your hat. You can absolutely do the color layout however you like. Once we're ready to make that brim, you can go ahead and cut off the other colors that you're using. You only need the brim color from then on out, and it's a lot easier if we go down to just having one color attached to our hat. Now, because it's easier to see, uh, for us to see, I am going to go ahead and stick with the blue for our little sample here as well. A little bit easier to see against the white table than that cream was. So moving on to the brim of our hat, we are going to have different directions for each size. However, row, round one, I should say, is almost exactly the same. We are going to start out by working the entire round in the front loop only for both sizes. Again, this is the case. Now, remember, we worked in back loop only went under just that back loop. Front loop only, we're going to go under just the front one, leaving the one in back unworked. We're also going to be working the same repeat for both sizes, where we half double crochet in the first three stitches, then two half double crochets in the stitch after that. So let's go ahead and show what that looks like. We start with our chain one. You can see I've already gotten my uh, stitch marker out of the way here. So now for this round, we are doing, just double checking, standard half double crochets. So we go half double crochet in our first stitch. Our brim is going to switch back and forth between half double crochet and herringbone half double crochet to help create a little bit more texture. If you really prefer one stitch over the other, you can do your favorite for the whole brim. It's up to you, it's your hat. So we've got our first stitch there in our first stitch. Oh, but you know what I did? I made a mistake, I went under both loops. Let's pull that out again. We all make mistakes sometimes, and my favorite thing about crochet is how easy it is to fix them. So we've got our chain one. We want to put that half double crochet in our front loop only. So this is the stitch we joined to. We want to come right down here with our hook. And if you look closely, you can see I split the stitch there with my hook as I come up through it so that that back loop is not going to get included or used. So there we go, pull that through. Now we've got our first herringbone half double crochet. Before we worked in the back loop only, it helped push our hat this way. By now working in the front loop only, it's going to help push that brim out. So we still want to mark that first stitch. So there's herringbone, or excuse me, standard half double crochet in the first stitch. We need the next two, but we still want to go front loop only. So there's our second one. Just take your time. Get under that third one. There we go. And then two in the stitch after that. 
So there's one, and then a second one right in that stitch. So for both sizes, both the small and the large, this is your repeat. One, 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 two. One, 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 two. One, 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 two. Remember to make those in the front loop only, and these are regular half double crochet stitches. However, the difference between the small and the large is when you get all the way around for the small, there's going to be two more stitches left outside of that repeat. You won't have enough room for a whole another repeat. You'll have two more stitches at the end. We just put a half double crochet in the front loop of those two last stitches. In the larger size, your repeat will get you all the way around. So when you get all the way around, you go ahead and join with a slip stitch. So here on the finished hat again, you can see there is that unused back loop only when we started our brim in the front loop only. That really just helps push that broom out, or excuse me, that brim out a little bit more. So here you can see a round of half double crochets. Round two of our brim, again for both sizes, is worked even. A round of herringbone half double crochet. Round three, again worked even, is a round of half double crochet. In round four, for both sizes, we have another round of increases, but this one isn't a herringbone half double crochet, so that would be this round right here. So round four is herringbone half double crochet, but for the repeat for that one is one, 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 two. So four singles, then your double. One, 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 two. One, 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 two, all the way around. That will bring you to 120 stitches on the large size. For the small size, when you get all the way around on that round four, again, you'll have two stitches left. Go ahead and just work your herringbone half double crochet into those last two lonely stitches. That should bring you to 104 for the small size. Then there's just two more rounds for both sizes. Again, all stitches you've seen me make dozens of times now. For round five, we have another round worked even of half double crochet. Same thing for both sizes. For round six, again, same for both sizes, herringbone half double crochet for that very last round. And then we can just join and finish off our final round. Again, I just went back and forth. Half double crochet, herringbone half double crochet, half double crochet, herringbone half double crochet, half double crochet, herringbone half double crochet, just to create a little bit more interest in the brim. If you want to make it all in half double crochet or all in herringbone half double crochet, that's totally up to you. Both stitches work. And it's a great way to customize your hat and make it perfect for you. And that's how to crochet the casual crochet bucket hat. Remember that this is a free pattern you'll find on mooglyblog.com. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.